Hi, and welcome to my presentation of the uh, Dare to Dream Different contest. Uh, I'm here now to tell you about my project, which is a device for monitoring and controlling livestock animal and also for preventing predator animals from entering areas. All using a CPU with .NET Micro Framework embedded on it. And I'll tell you now why I think uh, .NET uh, micro framework is great for this purpose. As you just saw in the clip, keeping animals within fences can be impractical. Animals are often used to move around on large areas. Fencing a large area is time consuming and also expensive. Uh, and once there is a gap in the fence, the fence is useless. Also, a real fence cannot be moved, it's fixed. While my device is a device for setting up a virtual fence. A fence that only exists on the CPU as coordinates representing the boundary and, from, uh, and for keeping the animal inside the fence, I'm using feedback. So force feedback from a, a certain distance. When the animal uh, gets closer to the fence, it receives a different type of feedback. I have three, three types of feedbacks. One alarm, sound audible alarm, um, a vibration, and then electrical shock. This is all useful for keeping an animal inside the fence or outside the fence, for that matter, when it comes to predators. So, I will explain to you all the details about my device and how it's built. And we're also going to see a couple of demonstrations and also a live test. I have here now all my um, devices, all the components for the device. These are all uh, interacting together. We have um, the uh, main CPU with a .NET framework. We have a um, GPS, GSM um, unit. Then we have a, a heart rate monitor. And we have a compass and a transmitter for sending signals to this one, which is the feedback device. We're all familiar with the uh, with the, the Tahoe 2, which is the one that I got for the uh, contest. GPS GSM unit is the one sending status information from the device to a central server and also receiving new virtual uh, uh, boundaries. So, and then we have the compass. The reason for this is that it will switch off the feedback from the feedback device immediately when, when the animal turns in the right direction. And then we have the heart rate monitor device. This one is for uh, measuring the heart rate of the animal. It's all powered on my uh, prototype with a uh, battery with a solar panel and uh, of course there is a, a dual antenna for the GPS and GSM. This is the map client software. It's used to track and monitor animals wearing the control device. It's also used to configure devices, add virtual boundaries to the map, and then to upload the boundaries to the device in the field. It's a Microsoft Silverlight application. It embeds virtual Earth map control for Silverlight, and it shares much of the same logic as the control device in the field. Here's how it works. The horses I put on my map represents animal wearing the control device. And I've also added virtual boundaries to my map. Animals within the same group share the same boundary. Boundaries can also be assigned to individual animals. This is useful for predators or just for keeping your dog in the front yard. This boundary is active for all my horses. I can make a different boundary for my cows and so on. I added limits for triggering the different feedbacks, audible alarm, vibration and electric shock. This will activate the device to give feedback to the animal as it closes into the boundary. A virtual fence is heard and felt long before the animal receives an electric shock, giving it the chance 
to react and turn back in the other direction. I will now upload my boundary to the device. The boundary is uploaded to a database using a cloud application service to exchange data. The boundary I just sent from the map client is uploaded to a service application running in the Azure cloud. The control devices also connect to this service to post their status, and when they do, they are given new boundary coordinates if it's available, which it is in my case for the horse. The new boundary is seen as coordinates on the horse group. The device connects, receives the new boundary coordinates. At the chosen time, the boundary is activated and processed by the .NET microprogram running on a Meridian chip. stable outside Bergen and I'm here with uh, Linda who's the owner of this horse and now we're going to try out the device on the horse. Just a quick check on the equipment and then uploading the map coordinates to the device. The device is now ready to be mounted on the back of the horse. The device is then strapped onto the horse with a feedback collar around its neck. The horse is then let loose on the field and we try to make it move towards the boundary. The idea is that the animal will learn from that experience and avoid entering too deep into the boundary zone again. The device will warn the animal with audible alarm and vibration feedback before it enters the shock zone, much in the same way animals relate to traditional electric fences. The horse clearly seems to be reacting to the feedback system of the device and this was exactly what I was hoping to achieve. As a horse owner, do you think that this is something that you can make use of in the future? Yes, I think it would. The test was very successful and so interesting. Okay. Another interesting scenario is that the device can be used to set up virtual corridors. The herd is contained within the corridor and then the shape of the corridor is dynamically changed over time. This will actually let us transport animals from one place to the other. And in the case of cattle belonging to several different farms grazing on the same area, it's just a matter of uploading different virtual corridors to the members of the different farms. Cattle would then move along in the direction of the corridor, heading for the farm they belong to. Now, this is a prototype, and it remains a lot of testing before this can be commercialized. The finished product should be about half the size of a mobile phone, and about one third of an iPhone. In fact, it should be small enough to fit into one of these colors, powered by either solar technology or even harvest kinetic energy from the animal itself. Since most of the uh, components uh, in the device is already widely used in mobile phones, it should be very inexpensive to mass produce this. And this is of, of course important for widespread in the product. The profit here is in a quantity. This has been a fun challenge for me. Although I have developer background, it's been my first time with the .NET micro framework. And I was really surprised to see how easy it was to make quickly working technology out of it. So I will definitely be using the .NET micro framework uh, to further improve and develop as my animal control device goes into the next phase. Thanks for watching. <laughs>